maybe stuck up. Apparently the highway is closed down, so uh, might be rolling a little bit late. Uh, this is John O'Sullivan. Uh, John is the founder of the Change in the Game project. Uh, he writes for SoccerWire.com. He's been in the Huffington Post, Soccer America. Um, he's been a director of coaching and an executive director for youth soccer organizations, a collegiate coach, a professional player. Uh, and then for the last few years, he's been traveling around discussing uh, both kind of organizational change and then uh, also creating a positive kind of player-centered environment for, for youth athletes. Uh, so I'm happy he's here. Uh, so, John, welcome. Awesome. Thanks, so guys. You. Thank you all. Please enjoy your lunches. They smell fantastic. Um, I've been passing around uh, just some yellow sticky notes, so if everyone can just take five and we'll hold off. We'll use them in a little bit. Um, but basically over the next hour or whatever here, I I'm here to help you out. And this whole day I'm here to help you out. So if you have a question, ask it. If you have a comment, please make it. And um, if you have a suggestion, let's, let this be a discussion. And let, let this be um, something that uh, you can all take a few things from this room here and hopefully encourage your parents to come tonight so that moving this organization forward over the next weeks and months and years, um, you can have some good ideas. Um, as Miles said, I, I spent a lot of years in your seats. Um, when I stopped playing, I was a college coach, and then I was a club director in Vermont, in Michigan, and in Oregon. Um, so I've had every role from team coach to OEP coach to technical director to a program director to starting a youth academy program um, to starting a regional training center for Portland Timber of Major League Soccer. So I've kind of worked on all levels. So I coached the WPSL team and the women's game. So, kind of been at all levels, and a couple years ago I started this Change the Game project. And really, I started out working with parents, but my, my passion is working with coaches, because that's what I do, and that's what I love, and especially with my background in soccer, I especially love working with youth soccer organizations. And so what I want to talk about today is, how can you guys take your organization forward? And I want to start by saying that you are already, I would say, a one percenter. When I look at your website, when I talk to Bo, when I talk to Miles, when I look at the strategic plan, you guys are already doing what a lot of people pay lip service to, but they never do. So you're already way ahead of most. And there's not something that I look at and say, oh, here's this big glaring area, just do this and you'll be fine. So what we want to talk about today is, is getting better bit by bit. And so, just real quick, does anyone know who this guy is? I want to hear this guy for David Brailsford, bouncer from the bar last night. <laughs> David Brailsford, um, in 2006, was hired by Great Britain Cycling because it was a cycling <coughs> mad nation, and they were terrible on the professional level. They were terrible on the top level. And so Great Britain Cycling hired them because they got the 2012 Olympics, and they're like, we can't host the Olympics and get killed in every sport here on the cycling front. And so Brailsford brought this philosophy that we can sit around waiting for one you know, super duper top cyclist to come along, or we can just be better about everything we do. And so his whole idea is what he calls the aggregation of marginal gains. Instead of trying to be 20% better at this, can you get 1% better in every aspect of your organization? Take 1%, so this is his quote, right? 1% from 1% uh, margin in improvement in everything you do from the mechanics on upward. So what they did with Great Britain Cycling was they made the bikes a little lighter. They made the chains a little stronger. They got hired a nutritionist and made the food that much better. They bought every cyclist in the program their own special pillow so that they slept a little bit better. They tested massage gels and, and said, okay, which one gives the best massage and the best recovery? And every single aspect of everything they did, they said, if we can add that up, slowly but surely, those gains are going to compound over and over and over time. And this whole idea is if you get 1% better in everything that you do, you're not going to notice it in a week. You're not going to notice it in a month. But over the course of time, you're going to notice it and those gains add up. And, and by, by the same token, 
when you don't do it, right? When you let something slide, when you don't give your best effort, when you say, I'll ignore that parent behavior, or I'll let that coach uh, disrespect the referee, or I'll do all these things, you know, it's not going to affect things this week. And it's probably not going to affect things this month. But over the time, when those little things add up and you let things slide little by little, it's the same thing. You go down. And so what Brailsford's whole idea was is let's just get a little bit better. And so hired in 2006, in 2009 they just, uh, decided to start a Tour de France team. They wanted, to top, they wanted to win the Tour de France by 2015. And they were wrong. They won it in 2012 and 13, and again this past summer. And the 2012 Olympics, after having won one bronze in the 2004 Olympics, right before he was hired, they won 80% of the gold medals in cycling. All based on this idea of can we get a little bit better. So I, I use this story as sort of a, a way to frame everything we're going to talk about. How can you take your organization and get a little bit better at everything you do? And so I think there's three ways and three areas that almost every youth sports organization that I work with can get better. One is having good core values that you define and you live and you reward. One is through improved parent education, and one is through what we call a new kind and better coaching education uh, that, that doesn't just focus on the X and O's that goes beyond that. So let's dive right in and talk about these things. And like I said, if you have some questions, um, please don't be free to ask. So what's a core value? You guys have core values. Anyone tell me your core values of your organization? I hope somebody can. Does anyone else know? Yeah, go ahead. All of them. Just give me one. Innovation. What's that? Innovation. Innovation. Together. Together. All inclusiveness. All inclusiveness. Respect. Respect. <laughs> Teamwork. Teamwork. My guys, those are five, right? Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, okay. Those are five. Right. So. These are our core values, and, and the thing about a core value is, right, it's this principle, it's this guiding principle for your organization, right? And what it tells you is, are you on the right, right path and you're headed toward your goals, or are you on the wrong path and, and, and not heading towards your goals? And see, the thing is, a lot of organizations have core values, and they have beautiful posters and they hang on the walls, but most people can't tell you what they are, and most people don't know what they look like in action. The core values are, are nice when you're winning, right? When you're coaching a team and you're 10 and 1, it's pretty easy to coach. But when you're 1 and 10, you better know where you're going and have a plan and know what you're doing or things don't work that well. And these are where core values come in for an organization. And so there's a couple things about these values, and then we'll get into yours, that I think are really, really important, right? They need to be inspiring. Right? They need to say, they, they need to be not a rule. A core value is not a rule. It's a, it's a standard. It's something that people aspire to and want to be. But the things that you can guarantee about an organization or guarantee about a team. They're clear and concise. They're believable. And, and then here's the big one. So the things that an organization or a team or a leadership group is willing to hold everybody accountable for. And so when you list your core values, and there's yours, right? What are they, or are these things that are defined well? I think they are, they're on your website, they're defined. But the question is, do we hold each other accountable for these things, right? Do we hold each other accountable for respect, right? So let's look at it right now. What does respect look like amongst you guys? How would you define respect amongst this group here? Yes, there is math on this test. I'm sorry. <laughs> Just an appreciation for what what everyone's doing, the the programs, and and you know when somebody needs help doing certain things, that people step up to the plate to do that. Perfect. That's great. What does respect look like for a coach on the sideline? It's just as simple as the parents, and the, you know, like not yelling and screaming if you've asked them to just relax. As as the coach, yeah. yeah. What does respect look like for a parent? Letting the coach coach. What else? Letting the referees ref. Letting the players play. Yeah, that's respect there. What does respect look like for a player? 
Yeah, so respecting your teammates, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. What else? And the respecting opponent as well. The other team. Respecting your coach, respecting the opponent, respecting the yeah. officials, yeah. right? So, so this is what respect looks like. What does respect look like for a Baton Rouge soccer player at home? Because see, a core value is something that you live every moment. See, I think a lot of organizations say, oh yeah, this is great, we have these great values. But imagine if you were different. Imagine if one of your kids went home and said, you know what, I'm not going to do that because in soccer, this is what they teach us about respect. And so I'm not going to disrespect this teacher in school. I'm not going to disrespect a, a, a kid on the playground. I'm not going to disrespect um, a friend because of that. See, these are what I think that our youth sports organizations, we have this great opportunity to teach these things that go beyond the field. And like I said, you guys are ahead of most. I mean, I have these organizations that their mission statement is, you know, to teach technical and, and tactical, you know, ability of blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you know, okay, great, you've been around for 40 years, how many pro players have you produced? And they're like, oh, well, none. I'm like, wow, so that's, you know, really inspiring, right? You're going to teach soccer, and you don't produce pro players, so how about having a bigger mission? And so I think when you guys talk about your core values amongst this group, and then you talk about your core values amongst um, the coaches who work for you, or the coaches who work with you, it's really important to define these things and how they look and what they look like in every aspect of what you do. And, and then to get that across, not only to the people in this room, not only to board members, but get that across to your players. And get that across to their parents. <clears throat> and then you start creating an organization where, where the things that you're teaching on the field become part of their lives off the field. And then we're truly serving people as coaches and we're truly serving people as an organization. And that sets you apart. Because nobody does this. Nobody does it. They talk about it, but they don't do it. And I'm sure a lot of you have had, you know, players that maybe played for you and you've never had a problem. I had lots of players who coaches would come up to me and say, man, you know, how do you ever coach that kid? All he does is get red cards with me. I'm like, wow, I never had a red card with me. Why is that different? Is it the kid or is it the coach? So, is it the organization? Is it you? Can you be better? And so I think it's really important that you guys moving forward here, as you have a strategic plan, and, and, and you know, Bo, you were just saying that we've talked about value, but the strategic plan is kind of a new thing that we're just rolling out to this group and out to the organization. So as you look at that plan that you all have invested in as an organization and given ideas to and given feedback to, right, can you talk about this vision and you all share a vision and you all define your values the same and can you articulate them? Can you teach them to other people? And does everything that you do when you put on that shirt reflect your values? When you're winning, when you're losing, when you're in public, when you're in a top soccer program, when you're in any sort of place so that when it comes back to oh, that's a bathroom soccer coach. Right? That's a different person, that's a different organization. And this is when core values really become real, they become tangible, and they become a big difference maker. They become a, not just a 1% difference maker, but a 10% difference maker. And so I was talking to these guys at breakfast this morning, how can, how can we do this? And, and I think the biggest thing that a lot of people miss about core values is maybe they take this step and they get to the point where they define them, but they don't reward them. So here's what I mean. You coach a team. Right? And what, a, what might be a, a value that you have on one of your, on your team? What is the core value for a team? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I, I, I could have pointed at anyone at this table. So, <laughs> oh, this side. Okay. Coach your team. What's your core value? What's something that you value? Uh, adaptability. Adaptability. Great. What else? Personal commitment. Commitment. Excellent. What else? I was going to say time. What you put into it. So commitment, right? I mean, we can throw out a lot of words. Effort, right? Passion, whatever we want to call these things. All right. So this is what so many teams do, right? They said, yeah, these are our values. We stand for, you know, being great teammates. We stand for sportsmanship. We stand for, you know, integrity. We, we stand for effort. And then what award did they give out at the end of the season? The MVP. 
right? So what is 